most of us feel, trust it. Uh, and that's why we're doing this. You know what I mean? Um, because living with sickle cell is a trauma. Growing up with sickle cell, so this is the craziest story. My mom got married when I was five. We moved to Pittsburgh um, for about four years. So in Pittsburgh, I would get sick a lot. I would be at Children's Hospital a lot over and over. Um, I was part of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So I wished to go to Disney World. That was an amazing experience. But um, yeah, so I was in and out the hospital. You know, I did miss school a little bit. But like that time, I don't, I don't like at, within those four years, I don't remember too much about it. I wasn't, I didn't have crises for years. For years, like by the time I went to my freshman year in college, I couldn't recall the last time I went to the hospital. So when I would see my hematologist, they were in shock that I never got sick. So by the time I started getting more into college, I moved here my sophomore year and did three internships out here. That's when things got crazy. first moved to LA I was in the hospital every two weeks for a year and then after that I was in the hospital every month for a year so I spent more time at the hospital than I spent at home the hospital was basically home it was to the point where I go to children's hospital emergency room they know my name and they know what to do so when I transitioned um, into an adult hospital now I go to the Norris Cancer Center in East LA um, I have a great hematologist there, but before I got to the point where I was transferring, it was a bit of a, of a, I've had hits and misses, so I've tried really different, a lot of hospitals, um, they look at you like you're crazy, or everyone knows, they tend to think sickle cell patients are drug addicts. Like, if I go in there with makeup, or say I'm coming from like somewhere where I'm done up, and I just happen to get sick and I gotta go, they won't treat me as if I really need the care that I need because of the fact that I don't look sick. And that's one of the biggest things, just like with friends, with people in general, you don't look sick. What's wrong with you? You put, you ha you keep yourself together. I've never seen you. Like, you know, it's just like the same story. And they start saying, you know, you can't trust everybody because you let people into your life. And it's like, oh, she uses that as a crutch. Oh, it's not really that bad for her. She got SC. That's nothing. Like, you, you feel me? Those were a few hurdles to jump over. But now I have a great hematologist, um, world-class doctor, and she takes good care of me. That hospital is the greatest. So I do owe the God, God all the glory for letting me find out about them and letting me be able to have the insurance to even go there. Having sickle cell as a female, it has its tribulations. <laughs> so as far as dating, um, I'll tell people I have sickle cell, but most people don't even know what it is. Like to keep it hunting, nobody really, you know, unless you tell them to look it up or they've seen you firsthand, nobody really understands. So I'll, I'm very open with telling people I have sickle cell, but I don't tell them how bad it can get. If it happens, you gonna find out. So that's basically how I keep it um, as far as dating. I just feel like, you know, I don't even know if this is about to last. So I'm not about to give you my everything unless, you know, we're together and these are some of the things you have to deal with. Because I feel like as a sickle cell, as a female too, it doesn't only take a toll. Just having sickle cell in general, it doesn't only take a toll on us. Um, I don't think people really understand the effects it can have around the people around you and how it also takes a toll on them. Because when you're dating, it's like, I didn't sign up for this. Like, I didn't know this was going to happen. And, you know, being in and out of the hospital, I was dating at one point with sickle cell, had a crisis on my first date. He took me to the hospital, and then I was in Maryland, so my mom met up with him, and it was just crazy, and he stayed with me after that, but then it got to the point where I was getting sick so often, he couldn't handle it, and he was out. As an artist, as a female, living in LA by myself, at this point, my confidence is through the roof, with a lot, so it took me a while to get there, I was very timid when I first moved out here, um, and I think moving out here showed me, like, you gotta be a go-getter, everybody, 
is after the same thing. They don't care what you got. And you know, some people, you can, us, I can look at it as an advantage because they don't got to worry about, oh, um, what if I get sick before this performance or after or during? So that's one thing to think about. Like, you know, I've been singing since I was really young and I was trained in classical music. And then when I transferred high schools is when I started performing and creating my own music. And at that time, I wasn't getting sick. And then when I moved to L.A. and tried to do the same thing, it wasn't working as great because I would get sick. So that's one thing I have to think about as an artist. You know, stay on top of your rehearsals, but don't work too hard. Um, don't overdo it. Don't overexert yourself. Stay hydrated. And, you know, all those things taken into account, it can become really hard. Because it's like, okay, um... I gotta do this over, I gotta get it. But oh no, like I'm starting to get really hot, I'm sweating, I need to take a seat. Um, so sometimes I'll take medicine to prevent it. Um, sometimes I gotta take medicine after. There's a huge stigma around America about marijuana. And I am a huge advocate of marijuana because I feel like it saves my life. So me moving out here, being in the hospital every month, every other week, it was crazy. And I went to a holistic doctor. She had me try things. Um, I actually became gluten-free because of her. Gluten causes inflammation, sickle cell crisis inflammation, not good. So I became gluten-free. And then um, my mom did some research and actually told me to try marijuana. Not saying that takes away my pain completely. Sometimes I do have to pair it with medicine. But from day to day, just from me smoking has lessened my crises. I haven't been to the hospital in over a year. They don't tell you how morphine and dilated and um, all these medicines they pump into the IV. How that breaks down your body after a while. After a while, you, you become weak. Your body relies on it. And then that's how people become addicted because they need it so much for pain that they end up really needing it because now they don't know what to do without it. So when you're saying, oh, sickle cell patients are drug addicts, this, that, and the third, have you looked at what we have to do in order to be well? And as a sickle cell patient, if we're in the hospitals because we really need to be there. It's not a game. The longer you're waiting to give us our medicine, the worse it's going to get and the longer we're going to be in the hospital. Sickle cell mental health go hand in hand. I don't care what anybody says. When you're sick, it takes a toll on your mind. Like, it's just... First of all, being in the hospital or being sick all the time or not being able to do things that you see your friends doing or not being able to go to a party because you was good five minutes ago, but now you feel something coming on. Like, that is the hardest. It is depressing. It's sad. And then, you know, when I moved out here, going, being in the hospital until my mom was able to fly out, like, being in there just alone and being able to just sit there and think about it because you have nothing else to do, it is really depressing. It got to the point where I would go home, sleep, eat, and go to the hospital whenever I needed to go. So sickle cell and mental health really go hand in hand because, sorry. So, I don't know if you can still see the tears, but um, I don't think people really realize how much sickle cell can take a toll on your mind and your thoughts and just everything like that. It's emotional stress, it's mental stress. Um, physical obviously because of our crises like you know I'm I'm 19 20 out here in the hospital more than I'm at home like so used to the hospital walls more than my own walls so Jasper House Warriors is really good for people with sickle cell because sickle like I said sickle cell and mental health go hand in hand and it takes a toll on our mental health our emotional health so I really appreciate Jasper House Warriors being a platform for people to be themselves and talk about what they go through unapologetically.